Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 29th, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. My friend Kim and I started out the morning at the Braddock Bay East Spit, but really it wasn't that birdie. There was rain overnight that ended just around 6 a.m., so I don't think there was a whole lot migrating during the overnight hours. Had some loons moving out on the lake and um, a lot of swallow activity, but not really that much songbird activity. We had a couple of palm warblers and that was about it. And the only bird I photographed there was this Caspian tern. I got over to Braddock Bay Park a little early because this is Bird of Prey Day's weekend. So it started last night, it was all day today, and then tomorrow is another full day. So had a lot of visitors come out. I counted the number of people on the platform using a clicker and we had over 120 visitors today. So a huge number, great turnout. We were a little afraid it wouldn't be so good because of the weather. But a lot of people came out and we had a decent day for the migration. There were some morning rain showers and then it was overcast for a while. But finally in the afternoon there was a period of unexpected sunshine. So it actually got pretty nice there for a while. The winds early on were more out of the east. And then when the sun came it was shifting around to the southeast. So a somewhat favorable wind direction. At least there's a southerly component to it. And we had a, a decent amount of activity when the sun was shining. There were at least six bald eagles hanging around the bay in the morning, and many of them stuck around for much of the day, and we got to put the spotting scope on it so visitors could see them. Here we have an adult bald eagle, and here we have an immature bald eagle. This looks like a juvenile born last year, but we can see it's starting to molt some of the inner primary feathers. The local Cooper's hawk continues to harass every single turkey vulture that tries to migrate through. Here we have a shorebird and we see that it's got long legs sticking out behind, fair amount of barring on the underside, and a relatively long bill, plus it called as it flew over, letting us identify this as a greater yellow legs. We knew when it was gloomy this morning that if we had any hope of some raptor activity it would be these guys. So here we have an excipiter, you can see that long tail, but is it a cooper's hawk or a sharp shinned hawk? So let's take a look, the head looks relatively small. And we see a really squared off tail tip because all of the tail feathers are the same length. So we see the outer ones that fold underneath, they go right to the end of the tail, making the tip very squared off. They're not shorter. And we also see that the underside has an orange barring, letting us know that this bird is an adult. So this is an adult sharp shinned hawk. Here's a shorebird that I thought I heard fly over the other day, but I wasn't quite positive. So I've been listening to the call, making sure if I hear it again that I'll recognize it. And sure enough, it called, and I looked up, and there it was. So this is actually an upland sandpiper. So we can see that it doesn't have long trailing legs. So you just see the tail there and the, the legs and feet end before it. And kind of a relatively medium, small to medium length bill, not long like that greater yellow legs. And when we get the upper wing shot, it confirms it. Look at this white shaft to the outermost primary. That's a key field mark for identifying upland sandpiper in flight. And this is actually only the second upland sandpiper I've ever seen out of all the birding that I've done. Uh, it took me a really long time to finally see my first and this was my second. Let's see if we can figure out what this one is. So we see a raptor that's holding its wings in a bit of a modified dihedral posture, which means it goes up in a V and then flattens out. We see that it's got kind of a lanky appearance, somewhat pointed wingtips, and a relatively long tail. And especially if you look at that face, it almost looks like the face of an owl. It's got that facial disc kind of appearance to it. So based off of the shape, we know that this is a northern harrier. Now it's one of the brown types, not an adult male. The adult males are the gray ghosts, which are more white and gray. So this is either an adult female or a juvenile. And we see that this bird has a lot of streaking on the underside and is fairly heavily marked in the patagial area. So we know that this is an adult female northern harrier. Here we have a really distinctive duck flying by. This is a male wood duck. Here's another hawk that just by the shape we know it's an excipiter. It's got that long tail and kind of rounded wings. But is it a cooper's or a sharpie? Well, we see the tail. It looks like the tail feathers are all about the same length, so a really squared off tail tip and a relatively small head. Now, this one's holding its wings out straight, not pushing the wrists forward like we see a lot of the time on this species. But we see that the wings 
are a little bit stocky looking. They're not really long and lanky. They got a bit of a curve to them. So this is actually a sharp shinned hawk. And we see the uh, orange barring on the underside that lets us know that it's an adult sharp shinned hawk. Here we have a large dark raptor. We see that it has a really big head with big bill. So we know that this is a bald eagle. Remember that golden eagles have much smaller heads and bills than bald eagles. And also we see a lot of white in this wing pit area here. That's another good indication that it's a bald eagle and not a golden eagle. Immature bald eagles like this look quite splotchy underneath, a lot of splotchy white. Whereas immature golden eagles, they have very clean white patches. One patch in each wing and one at the base of the tail. And here's another immature bald eagle high overhead. Here's another adult sharp shinned hawk. So again, all of the tail feathers are about the same length, giving it a squared off tail tip. We see that it's got that orange barring underneath, indicating it's an adult. And also, the adults have a bit of a blue hood to them, dark blue, where it extends from the head all the way down the neck and onto the back. It's one continuous color. On a Cooper's hawk, the adults have a pale nape, which is the back of the neck. Here we have another immature eagle. And again, we see a lot of white in that wing pit area, really splotchy white appearance underneath, white on the underside of the body. So this is an immature bald eagle. Here's a photo that doesn't really show much besides the silhouette, but maybe the most notable thing is how pointed those wingtips are. So immediately we should be thinking falcon on this. And from the way it was flapping, a bit of a slower flap, and it circled, it was a bit of a slower soar. So I just got the impression that this was a large bird. And we also see that it's got a relatively wide tail. So with American kestrels, the tails often look extremely skinny. This bird looks like it has uh, more of a wide base to the tail. And we can get a little bit of a hint of what the head pattern looks like. And so all of that put together, let us know that this is a peregrine falcon, our largest falcon. Here we have another exhibitor. See that long tail and the rounded wingtips. This one looks like it has a relatively small head. It has a big bulge right here, making the head maybe look a little bigger than it actually is. This is a full crop, meaning that the bird has eaten recently. And it's got kind of a weird brown streaking on the underside. I think this is actually a juvenile just because it looks brown on top. And um, on the sides here, it looks a little bit like horizontal barring, but if you saw the front, it's more of a vertical streaking. So this is a juvenile sharp shinned hawk. Here we have a corvid and we see that it's got relatively long pointed wings. We see that the tail has really short outer tail feathers and then longer uh, middle tail feathers. You also see that the head sticks out relatively far and it's got a big bill. So this is not a crow, but rather this is a common raven. Here we have a sandhill crane that migrated over pretty high. And if you look here, this is actually the neck blending into the left wing. So it, you can't really see the neck and head very well. That's why it's a bit of a funny shape. The bird is actually flying to the right in this photo. And here to the left, you have the long legs sticking out behind. Here we have an adult sharp shinned hawk, and this is a classic sharp shinned hawk shape. So we see a relatively small head. We see the wrists pushed forward. If we draw a line here, we see that the head barely sticks out past that. So from a distance, this bird, you wouldn't even really see a head sticking out. And we see that the tail tip is squared off and even a little bit notched because all of the tail feathers are about the same length. And again, we know the adults have this orange barring underneath. And also notice the more rounded wingtips compared to the really pointed wingtips that we see on falcons. Here's one that I hope everyone can identify. It's an adult bald eagle. And early in the morning, I was on the platform talking to someone and I was a little ways away from my camera and we had an osprey come by really low and really close to the platform. And I was thinking about how it was probably the closest osprey I've ever seen. And it was a real shame that I didn't have my camera in my hand to get some photos. Um, but at the end of the day, another osprey took a very similar path. And this time I had my camera and was able to snap some photos as it went by. And really, this bird was pretty much at eye level and um, not that far away from the platform. So really cool to see the osprey passing by so close today.
taking a look at the eBird checklist today, only 31 species at the East Spit. So, so sort of a short trip and not that birdie. But from Braddock Bay Park at the Hawk Watch platform, we had 62 species. Taking a look at hawk count for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 80 turkey vultures, 7 osprey, 15 bald eagles, 9 northern harriers. For exhibitors, we had 98 sharpies and 2 coops. For beautios, we had 22 broad wings, 5 red tails. And for falcons, we had 2 kestrels, 1 merlin, and 1 peregrine for a total of 242 migrant raptors today. That brings our April total to 27,590 and our season total to 36,762. And I forgot to write it here, but Upland Sandpiper was the only new species for the season. And before we get to the forecast, and you're going to want to see the forecast for Monday, let's talk briefly about Bird of Prey days and look at the schedule for tomorrow. So for tomorrow, Sunday, April 30th, at 10 a.m., there's Help a Hawk. What does a wildlife rehabilitator do for hawks? Find out in this interactive program for kids of all ages. At 10.30, there's Hawk Watching 101. Get some identification pointers and visit the Hawk Watch to test them out. At 11.30, Captain Swoop's Migration Flight Academy. Learn about falcon migration in this interactive program for kids of all ages. At noon, Rendering Raptors, a raptor sketching workshop for all ages. At 1.30, there's Hawk Watch Bingo. Learn about what you can see at the Hawk Watch and win a prize. And at 2 p.m., the Red-Tailed Hawk Project, a research collaboration on the ecology and evolution of one of North America's most beloved raptors, given by Bryce Robinson from Cornell. And it's looking rainy, so I don't know how much I'll be out at the Hawk Watch, but if it's not raining, that's where I'll be and you can come visit. And there's also live raptors that will be available to see. And these activities take place at the Lodge at Braddock Bay Park, which is 199 East Manitou Road here in uh, Greece, New York, near Rochester. And the entry fee for adults is a suggested donation of $5, and kids are free. Taking a look at the forecast, rain is likely with the potential for heavy rainfall. High in the upper 50s, winds east-southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour, chance of rain 100%. So it's looking like the rain will be pretty steady the entire day, so there's a chance that the Hawk Watch will not be held, or even if we do go out, I would not expect much migration because of that rain. However, it's looking ahead to Monday, it's looking like excellent migration conditions in the morning hours. There's some morning sun and then cloudy, with occasional rain showers in the afternoon, high 51 degrees Fahrenheit, and winds southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, so... Uh, the winds don't get any better than that for us, especially if you combine those southwest winds with some sunshine in the morning. It could be a really huge raptor migration as we're in the peak of the broad-winged hawk migration and can get tons of sharpies and kestrels and other things this time of year. So as of right now, the forecast is looking really, really good for Monday morning. And um, seems like rain showers will eventually shut it down. Maybe there's some kind of front moving in, I'm not sure. but. In any case, we'll keep an eye on that again tomorrow, but um, looks like a good day to call in sick to work. For Tuesday, showers early becoming a steady rain later, high near 45. Winds west-southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So again, a pretty decent wind, but if it's gloomy and rainy, that might prevent a raptor flight. We'll keep an eye on that as we get closer. All right, it was really nice to see so many people out at Braddock Bay Park today for the Bird of Prey Days. Again, 120 visitors to the platform. It's the most I can rem remember ever having in a single day. So really cool to see so many people, and we got to see some cool birds throughout the day too. It's a shame the weather's not looking so great tomorrow, but there's a lot of indoor activities, so don't let it stop you from coming to join us tomorrow for Bird of Prey Days 2023 out at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.